Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. Callable Preferred Stock. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Callable Preferred Stock, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Adam Hayes, updated March 28th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that being fixed income, typically bonds, equities, typically on the common stocks. We're looking at the callable preferred stock. Let's first just think about the preferred stock component that we've talked about in prior presentations, which technically falls on the equity side of things, but functions similar to, or functions kind of like a bond. So functionally, it kind of falls in between the fixed income and the equity side of things. So a quick recap, what are bonds? We can think of them kind of like us giving or loaning money to the issuer of the bond, typically a government or a corporation, in return for the fixed income of interest payments, typically. And then we're going to be receiving the amount of the face amount at the maturity of the bond. If they don't pay us the interest payments, they will be defaulting on the bond and that will cause them problems. So it's pretty solid fixed income. When we look at the common stock side of things, we're looking at ownership in the company, remembering that companies are separate legal entities breaking out ownership into equal unit shares called stocks. The stocks then are often traded when we're looking at them by publicly traded companies on an exchange. And those are usually what we're thinking about when we're thinking about the common stocks. The preferred stock, let's not take into the callable component here, just talking preferred stock are, are items on the equity side of things. They're preferred because they usually have to get paid the dividends to the preferred stock before any dividends are paid to the common stock. And if there was liquidation to the company, they'd have to pay the preferred stockholders first. Preferred stock is not better than common stock, however, because if there was an upside, the economy did quite well, the business did quite well, the common stockholder value would typically increase more than the preferred stock. The preferred stock dividends are usually gonna be more, more guaranteed. That's why they're similar to a fixed income, similar to a bond type of situation. Okay, keeping that in mind, what is callable preferred stock? Callable preferred stock is a type of preferred stock that the issuer has the right to call in or redeem at a price set price after a defined date. So in other words, they can call them back. So the company can call them back. And that of course is gonna be a benefit to the company side of things, not so much for the investor side of things. So that's, you can see how the effect on the price would be if you're looking at preferred stock that has the callable feature, which uh, compared to stocks that do not have the callable feature. So callable preferred stock terms, such as the call price, the date after which it can be called, and the call premium, if any, are all defined in prospectus and cannot be changed later. So they're part of the terms, basically, of the preferred stock in the prospectus when the stocks are issued. Understanding callable preferred stock. Callable pre preferred stock, also known as redeemable preferred stock, is a popular means of financing for large companies combining the elements of equity and debt financing. So redeemable preferred shares trade on many public stock exchanges. These preferred shares are redeemed at the discretion of the issuing company, giving it the option to buy back the stock at any time after a certain set, uh, set date at a price outlined in the prospectus. So that means it's a benefit to the company because the company by issuing the preferred stock, they're basically financing the company. They're trying to get money. They're trying to get money so they can invest in things like equipment, buildings, and so on and grow, use that to generate revenue. And like when we, we refinance a home or like when we finance a home, for example, taking out a loan on the home, it would be nice if at a future point in time, we could refinance if the market conditions were good. And the same kind of concept is here. If they can call back uh, the, the preferred stock, which is similar in structure to a bond, 
then they can, if, if market conditions become more favorable, they would like to be able to do that and possibly structure their financing in a less costly way. So this is beneficial for the company if they have issued 5% preferred shares, but could now offer preferred shares at 3% because interest rates uh, or preferred shared yields have dropped. So in other words, similar to us on a mortgage, if we had a mortgage and we had the fixed rate mortgage and then the interest rates drop, well, it's like, well, now I'd like to be paying the lower interest rates. Is there any way I could do that? Well, I'd have to restructure my whole loan in order to do that. Same thing here. The, the company would like to be able to say, hey, you know, things are better at this point in time. I can issue preferred stocks and, and be paying lower amounts of payments. So we would like to restructure if we could. That would be giving them the opportunity. On the investment side of things, we would like to be able to say, no, keep paying us the 5%, right? Because now we're on the other side of the table as with our mortgage scenario. So we would like to lock them in to be paying the 5%, not let them restructure or pay out so they can restructure at the 3%. So they can call in their more expensive preferred shares and issue lower dividends at rate at rate ones. So callable preferred stock is routinely redeemed by corporations. This is done by sending a note to shareholders detailing the date and conditions of the redemption. For example, on January 13, 2021, Citigroup Incorporated announced that it was redeeming its Series S preferred stock effective February 12th. This means shareholders of the shares uh, needed to return their shares on that day in exchange for payment of their capital outstanding dividends and a premium as the case may be. Benefits of callable preferred stock issuer advantages so this is the company side of things a callable preferred stock uh, issue offers the flexibility to lower the issuer's cost of capital if interest rates decline or if it can issue preferred stock later at a lower dividend rate they have the capacity to refinance in essence for example a company that has issued callable preferred stock with a seven percent dividend rate will likely redeem the issue if it can then offer new preferred shares carrying a four percent dividend rate the proceeds from the new issue can be used to redeem the seven percent shares resulting in savings for the company conversely if interest rates rise after it issues the 7% preferred callable shares, the company will not redeem them and instead to continue pay the 7%, just like on our mortgage side of things. Obviously, if the interest rates go up, then I'm not going to refinance to get to the higher <laughs> to pay more interest, right? So if you're on the person who's lending you know, side of things, then, then it's nice to have the option to refinance if you could. But if the market conditions do not reflect that, then you keep going with where you're at and your, your interest rates that you're paying right now are, are lower than the market rates if the market's rates went up and you had your fixed rate. So the company is protected from rising financing costs and market fluctuations. So what are the investor advantages? What's I, what, I, what, is, what my advantage? That's what I wanna know, talking about the company. An investor owning a callable preferred stock has the benefit of a steady return. However, if the preferred issue is called by the issuer, the investor will most likely be faced with the, prospect, with the prospect of reinvesting the proceeds at a lower dividend or interest rate. So we can obviously we can we can get the return of investing in them. But if they are called, they're going to be called at a point in time when it's a favorable point in time to be to be refinancing for the issuer which means that the money that we're going to get we get the money at that point in time but we're probably not going to be able to reinvest the money and get the same return we were getting before because the reason the company called them is because the interest rates you know had changed meaning we're not going to get as favorable a rate most likely with similar kind of uh, of, of of investments so issuers usually pay a call premium at the redemption of the preferred issue which compensates the investor for part of this reinvestment risk so the, the when they when they call them they have to pay back and they might pay back somewhat of a premium again to kind of compensate for that so obviously just like with refinancing a home it's it's costly so they have to basically clear the cost of, of doing the process of refinancing and so on investors assure themselves of a guaranteed rate of return uh, if markets drop but they give up some of the upswing potential of common shares in exchange for greater security callable versus retractable preferred stock 
While callable shares may be redeemed by the issuer, retractable preferred shares are a type of preferred stock that lets the owner sell the share back to the issuer at a set price. Sometimes instead of cash, retractable preferred shares can be exchanged for common shares of the issuer. This may be referred to as a quote soft end quote retraction compared with a quote hard end quote retraction where cash is paid out to the shareholders.